Hey guys, how's it going? This is Mark from visualfactspro.com. In this tutorial, I will be showing you how I created the visual effects shot of the monster in the film Whispers. You can check out the film Whispers on our YouTube channel and there is a link in the description. So we are going to start with the close-up shot that you can see here and then we're going to move on to the white shot that looks like this. We are actually going to be creating the environment from scratch because when I shot the film Whispers I did not plan on having this shot so I had to create the ground from scratch as well as the street lights. This is just how I made these shots however you can apply quite a few techniques that you can learn from this video to create your own monster shots for your films. Visual Effects Pro did fund the movie so later in this tutorial I will be giving them a shout out. Alright let's get started. Alright, so firstly, you're gonna have to buy a 3D model. For me, I bought this from TurboSquid. When you buy your model, it might not be suitable to bring it into Element 3D. So you're gonna have to open a 3D program. My choice right now is Blender. Then you wanna press A and X, delete everything. Then you wanna go ahead and import the file. In my case, it was an FBX file. Um, Element 3D does not accept that. So you're gonna have to export it as either a Cinema 4D file or a OBJ file. What you might wanna do as well is click on your 3D model and add more subdivisions to it using a subdivision surface modifier. This will add more detail to your 3D model. In my case, I used two. After this, you wanna go ahead and press on file export and export as an obj once you've done that you want to go ahead and go into after effects and create a new composition you can either click on here or press ctrl and n call this the creature comp then press ctrl and y change the name to element 3d creature press ok then go to effects and presets type in element then click on scene setup you can either import the 3d model from here or go to file import and 3d sequence to import your animation once you have imported your animation you can check on normalized size you can change a couple settings in the baked animation section you can change where the animation starts and ends you can offset the animation either to preview it or actually offset it where it starts and you can also change the playback speed. One important thing to notice in Element 3D is that you need to separate certain parts of your model if you have different textures for it. In my case, I only have the actual 3D model and its eyes. The plane came with it, so I'm just gonna disable that. Then you wanna go into the material settings for the 3D model and make sure you are using uh, the physical shader, then import your diffuse texture then import your glossiness and then import your normal map and press ok when you import it as an obj sometimes it comes at a glossiness 180 or sometimes even 500 you want to change it back to 100 then you want to press ok then you want to press ctrl shift alt on c or you can go to layer new and camera if you shot a plate on set for your cg shot then you can use the same focal length as you used on set or if you're creating the background from CG as well you can just use whatever focal length you want in my case I shot it as a, with a 50mm lens so I'm gonna press OK if you toggle with C you can go into the different settings on how to move it in the camera I'm gonna change the rotation of this 3D model so it faces the camera you can also toggle on title and action save so you can more accurately see on where to have your 3D model. Then you want to go into the element 3D layer and go into render settings. Turn off physical environment and then go into lightning and turn off brightness multiplier. Then you want to create a light by pressing Ctrl, Shift, Alt and L. Or again you can go into layer, new and light. You want to have cast shadows turned on then press p and then press shift and a to have your point of interest and position on together then you can start moving your light you also want to look at references on where the light is coming from either from your backplate or from the shot that was shown in that same scene for me this is my backplate 
and I also note that the light is coming from the talent's left which means um, for our creature it's gonna have to be coming from its right so I'm gonna go ahead and place that on the right you want to make sure you name your lights correctly so for me this is gonna be the key light coming from the left I change the intensity to 250 then my next light is gonna come from the left again and this is gonna be the backlight and the last light I created was just a light coming from the top at a lower intensity then you need to go into the element free layer and go to render settings and shadows turn it on and change it to ray traced then go into your ambient occlusion and enable it then change it to ray traced as well once you have this you can move around with your camera to find the angle you would like to have for me I want a more of a close up alright then you want to press A twice by pressing on the camera and toggle on depth of field you again need to look at your references on how much depth of field is needed for me this shade is a perfect example then I need to find the focus distance and you can also change your aperture for me probably 15 works better even lower maybe 12 so we're just trying to recreate the same type of field right once you're done that you can go into element 3d and scene setup again and you want to make sure you increase your normal map to maybe 220 just to have more details you can see the difference before and after you can also go into your glossiness map and play with the glossiness amount to increase or decrease the amount of glossiness that goes on your monster after you've done this you want to create a new comp by pressing ctrl and n and let's call this creature and background you want to bring in the creature comp and then you want to bring in your background plate this is the background plate for me for me because I shot this um, handheld because I did not have a tall enough tripod I'm gonna have to go ahead and either stabilize this shot or just freeze frame it then create a curves adjustment and slightly brighten it up then let's work on our color grading so we're gonna press ctrl r and y to create an adjustment layer or we can go up to layer new and adjustment layer let's rename this grade number one in my case i am color grading using film convert so let's add that to the adjustment layer in my case i used the trx 400 i turned down the strength of the grain so there's no grain in this one and i turned down the film luma to zero percent then you want to duplicate that in this instance i used the the kdp 400 ptra and i increased the strength to 100 then you can see the brightness between the shadows are completely different so you're going to go into your creature com search for tint then add a tint then you will change your black levels to be the same as the background and then press ok i'm also going to go into color correction on the second grade and make it slightly more contrasty by creating two points and dragging the bottom one down and then the top one up slightly creates more of a contrasty look and then once you've done with your color grade you can create one last comp by pressing ctrl and n and call this final comp i'm gonna change my aspect ratio to be 245 so my aspect ratio is gonna be 1920 by 817 press ok then bring in your creature and background comp then you can change the size of how you want it my shot looked something like that in the end after you're done with this after you finalize how your shot is gonna look like you're gonna have to go back into your creature comp because in my case there was not enough samples produced by element 3d so it created some sort of fireflies um, noise up here so for this you want to go into your creature comp go into element 3d go into output and then just increase your multi sampling to maybe 16 and I also increase my super sampling to be 4 and this completely gets rid of that you can see it before and after and that's it that's the close-up shot
So before we continue to the white chat, I'd like to first thank Visual Effects Pro for funding the film and sponsoring this tutorial, which is us. So Visual Effects Pro is a library of stock footage for visual effect artists. You can find our products. We do gun effects, particles, and we also do some free visual effects. Visual Effects Pro is growing. We have new products coming out very soon. And if you are looking for high quality stock footage, then definitely check out visualeffectspro.com. You can also download our free assets as well. All right, let's go and make the white shot. All right, so let's move on to the white shot. For this shot, we first gonna create the background and then work on the creature and then the color grading. So I've already got my background here. This shot for me was not planned on set. This actually came in the editing. So I am actually using the drone shot, the end of the drone shot from the beginning of the film. So firstly, I am going to go into FX and presets and apply an effect called CC power pin. And then what I'm going to do is squish it down. So we have more of a level shot. So I'm going to scale it up to around 300, move it down slightly, alright, so that looks good. In my case, I have the actor shown on the clip, so I'm going to go ahead and press on the clone stamp tool and double click on the footage. Then I'm just going to remove the actor's face. You can change your brush sizes and your softness here. And that is it for me. After that, what you want to do is pre-compose. So I'm going to control shift and C or right click and pre-compose. You want to move all attributes into the new composition and you can just call it pre -com. Then you can zoom out and make a mask. Then feather it a lot. Then for my case to avoid it moving, I'm just going to time and freeze frame it so now we got the ground and then i'm going to make a new comp call it final comp and bring in the background after this i'm going to make one more mask and i am going to mask around the middle part something like that then i'm going to feather this quite a lot as well then I am going to add a curves adjustment and make it quite contrasting. After the curves adjustment, I'm going to add an exposure, crank it down a bit, maybe to minus 0.95. Then I'm going to add a sharpen and crank that up to maybe 75 or so. Then I'm going to duplicate the layer. Then I'm going to change the blending mode for the top layer to be color dodge. It kind of brings out the highlights a little bit more. Then I'm going to bring in the background plate from the previous shot. So this is the one I've used for the close up. I'm going to cut around the top part to include the street lights. After that, I'm going to apply a curves adjustment and make it much more contrasting. If you press this, then it's going to toggle the mask. After this, I've applied a camera lens blur at an amount of 2. Then you want to press on the clip and press F and feather it. Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to press Ctrl and Y and then pick a dark spot. So this is just going to fill up the rest of the background. After this, you want to search for match grain and drop it on the solid. Then change this to final output and select the street lights footage. You can also adjust the mask. Then after that you want to put the solid you just made to be in the bottom. Then what I also did, I duplicated the background. I solo it. I'm gonna bring in these masks so it feathers the front bit too.
and I'm going to scale this down then unsolo it so you can see you might have to reduce the mask feathering this is just to create the more continuous street then I'm going to press T and lower the opacity to maybe around 50% maybe even 40 so it fades into the darkness then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna duplicate the creature comp that we made for the close-up I'm going to rename it to creature comp wide I'm gonna open it up I am going to disable the depth of fill this is so we can preview it a little bit faster then I'm gonna toggle with the options with C I'm gonna track back with my camera So place your camera where you would like it to be then you have to go into element 3d and press on create and a plane then you want to make a big enough plane and you want to go into the material of that plane go to the last section and click on matte shadow so now this is going to be creating our shadows then I'm going to go into the final comp and drop in the comp we just created one thing you could either do is you could press S unclink the constraint and make this a negative which is gonna swap where the light is coming from the light source that would be one way or you could also change your lighting by just pressing P and A and changing the position of the light in this case I'm not going to change the lighting I'm just going to swap then you press on the creature and you add a tint effect you press the a darker spot in the background to match it with the background and now we are going to copy the same grading that we did for the close-up you want to make sure that the grade number two is on top now you can use this technique for many things uh, I just demonstrated how I did the shot in whispers you could potentially make this part a little bit brighter as this is a watcher so this would be quite hard to see on devices like a phone and that is the white chat from whispers i hope you enjoyed this tutorial don't forget to check out visualfxpro.com and don't forget to subscribe and like it and share it if you'd like thank you